So what is the last computer that you would ever think would be capable of running COBOL? Well, we're going to find out on this episode of... Hi gang, how the heck are you doing? John Lotshaw, Crackpot Computing here, and welcome to episode five of Retro Coding's Adventures in COBOL. In this episode, we're gonna take a little detour from what we've been doing lately. Now, let me ask you, when you think of computers that run COBOL, what do you think of? Usually think of big iron, big massive mainframe computers that are churning through millions and millions of records. You don't think of this, the Commodore 64. Now, the 64 was one of the most popular computers ever made. Over 17 million of them were sold. And you don't normally think of it as being a computer for COBOL, but it really can handle it. Think about it. COBOL was designed 22 years before the 64 hit the market. The Commodore 64 can run circles around the mainframes that were originally running COBOL compilers, and it can do computer, it can do color television graphics, which those mainframes couldn't do. So the 64, it can do COBOL, or can it? Well, in 1984, a publishing company called Abacus Software released COBOL 64, a, a COBOL compiler for the Commodore 64. And that's exactly what it says. It's a COBOL compiler for the 64. Let's take a look. Okay, we're here in the uh, Commodore emulator. This is Vice. And uh, the reason why I'm using an emulator is because I don't have an actual 8-bit Commodore computer to run this on. Um, and it looks a little different from the traditional uh, 64 because uh, the 64's color scheme is uh, hard to read. So I have used the ROMs from a uh, uh, SX64, which was the portable Commodore 64. Uh, it's other. It's the same as the uh, 64, except the colors are a little uh, different and much read much more readable. First thing we've got to do is insert the Abacus COBOL disk into our virtual floppy drive. So let's go ahead and do that by attaching this disk image. And here's the disk image right here. Uh, it gives you the uh, listing of what's in the drive and it even looks like the 64 uh, printout. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and open that. And the first thing we've got to do here is uh, actually load uh, COBOL 64 8 comma 1 and we'll wait while it searches for and loads the, uh, the loader program. Okay, now that that's loaded we can jump to the machine language routine that we just loaded and that is at uh, 2051. And there we have COBOL 64 version 2.5, written by K.A. Alexander, copyrighted 1984. That was the year I graduated from high school. Oh man, I feel old. Okay, so as you can see, this is a very, um, uh, by modern standards, primitive interface. It's a, it's a line interface and the editor is a line editor. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a new program. So we'll do six here in this menu. And it'll ask us for our new program name and we'll tell it hello. Because we're going to do hello world. And now it's loading the editor. 
and that took about 30 seconds to load the editor. Okay, so now we're in the editor. This editor is a line editor. It is not a full screen editor like what we're used to or even what the basic on the Commodore 64 had. Uh, but let's uh, start by putting in a command here to uh, um, automatically number our lines because this is COBOL 74 and it is um, going to require us to use the line numbers and um, be much more strict about formatting than we have been previously yeah, with the freeform formatting that GNU COBOL allows us to do. So uh, it, it uh, very helpfully gives us a little dot over there to tell us where the beginning of area B is. But the first thing we need to do is we need to come over and put in our identification division. And remember this space right here, the first six numbers are for the um, line number. Space seven is for the comment or, or the call the identifier area or the indicator area. And now here we can do and this one does require program ID. And it, the compiler actually requires you to put C64. Uh, and I just realized that I screwed up. And actually, I, I'm, I'm wrong. This is a full, the full screen editor similar to the Commodore 64 basic. Uh, hello, world. Okay, so now we can do environment division and here we'll do our configuration section and this one does require uh, source computer C64 and object computer C64. Now this I believe, uh, we'll test this in a moment. I believe it was going to require us to put a data division here, but let's, we'll test that in a moment. Procedure division. Now we can use this little dot, which is the beginning of the B area, to put in our, uh, our code. So let's display hello world. And then stop run. All right, now we're out of the auto mode and we can do a list and there's the program. Now we want to save this and it's saving it out to disk and now let's see if we can uh, run it and now we can run it. So now it's going to run this is actually running the the compiler and if it works, it will tell us. If not, it'll tell us there's a problem. I think that it's going to tell us a problem. I think it's going to not like the fact that there's not a data division in there. Okay, yes, that's exactly what happened. Missing reserved word. The data division is not in there. So let's edit the pro let's edit this and go back in there. And the way that we'll put that in is by uh, inserting a line in between 500 and 600 and number it as 550 and then it'll slide it in there. You'll see. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter in a line 000550 and we'll say data division 
Now let's do a syntax analysis on this. So it's going to run the lexer and the parser and see how this does. Okay, it passed the first pass on it. Invalid entry. I believe what's wrong here is that it wants a um, um, a paragraph name in there. So let's see. Let's try. And let's change 800 to end prog. And we'll, just to be safe, we'll save it. And let's just, and there's hello. Okay, let's uh, let's let's run that syntax analysis again. So let's do this. An insert. Well, oh, that's interesting. Uh, the insert key on my keyboard turns into. Um, A period, or, or, or a backspace key. Um, interesting. All right, let's try listing that again. There we are. Let's uh, real quick. Let's just resequence this. Let's spell resequence right so that it uh, just renumbers everything nice and neat. There we go. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's run that syntax again. Hooray! Okay, apparently that worked and that was obviously sped up quite a bit because that was over a minute of waiting for just just for this so let's uh let's save this and actually run it and we'll exit back to the main menu and run it so now it's going to run the compiler again Actually, it's already done lexical, so it's actually running the uh, runtime. Uh, help. All right, let's take a look at the debugger because it shouldn't have done that. So let's do a single trace on. Let's do a single single step, and let's do. Well, let's just let's and then let's do uh, trace on and let's start the program. Hooray! Okay, there's the display hello world. So it is working. Uh, let's go back out here and let's try it again. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I hit the return key to abort it and it aborted it. Yay! There we go. Now we do have an error there in the last line, uh, so let's let's edit that and uh -oh. see what's wrong. Oh, actually, we want to do edit. I think the problem is that there's no period. Okay, so we'll list. Uh, no, I think the problem is that uh, twelve hundred is uh, is that twelve hundred that's in there. It's a blank line; shouldn't be in there at all. So let's delete twelve hundred. And let's list it again. And now it's gone. So let's um, let's try this again. 
and this I'm just going to I'm just going to save it and we'll exit and run it and this will do the full compile running the uh, lexical analysis and here we go now it's going to run the runtime and here we go okay but well, you know what you get the idea <laughs> So that's COBOL 64. Now, would I recommend this as a development system for someone who's interested in learning COBOL? No, oh, absolutely not. Oh, sweet fancy Moses, no. Only if I really, really didn't like the person. I mean, no, it's, it, it's, it's slow, it takes forever to load, it's cumbersome, it's COBOL 74, so you've got to deal with line numbers and making sure that everything's in the right columns. And no, absolutely not. Nobody should be doing this. The only reason that I did it is because I can get a funny YouTube video out of it. Which by the way, please reward my pain and suffering by clicking the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you're notified when future episodes of Adventures in COBOL are released and also liking the video too. That helps ease the pain somewhat that I just went through in order to make this. That segment of me working on it was edited down to 15 minutes, but it was over 30 minutes of footage that got condensed and sped up and cut out just because, no, it's, no, don't, don't do this. Don't, just, just don't, please don't. No, no, even if it's the only computer you have, don't. It's not worth it. Um, oh man, I, you know, I, it's gonna take me a long time to just to get the pain and suffering out of my system that I went through for this. This was not fun, it really wasn't. But anyway, I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something. It's interesting to see where COBOL has been and what it can do even if it shouldn't be doing it. Until next time, happy coding.